By the summer of 1998, Roy Evans had been a Liverpool employee for 35 years as a player, coach and a manager. During his four seasons in charge, he'd nurtured through a gifted crop of young players which included the likes of Steve McManaman, Robbie Fowler and Michael Owen. The Reds were among the most attractive sides to watch and retained respectable Premier League finishes of 4th, 3rd, 4th and 3rd. But Liverpool were chronically inconsistent and porous defensively. After an initial lift post Sunus, they were getting no closer to challenging Arsenal and Manchester United at the top of the league. And one League Cup success marked a meagre trophy haul after what the club considered adequate investment. After years of internal appointments, retaining heroes and reliance on bootroom expertise, it was determined that some outside influence and fresh ideas were necessary. Evans initially thought that Gerard Houllier was coming in to replace the retiring Ronnie Moran as part of the coaching staff. The board felt that that wouldn't give Houllier the authority his experience and standing in the game commanded though. He was considered for a director of football type position, but it was decided that he should be in closer contact with the players on the training field than this role would allow. In the first ever meeting between the pair, with key board members also present, it was confirmed that Evans and Houllier would be joint managers. At the beginning, both men were committed to making their unusual working relationship a success. They differed philosophically. Evans, so long associated with the club, was a traditionalist. Julia saw a team and methodology in need of drastic updating, but that was the point of bringing them together, and the pair remained largely cordial in their joint dealings throughout, with no personal ill feeling harboured even when in disagreement. For a short while, it looked like it might actually work. Liverpool began the 1998-99 season brightly with three wins and a draw from their first four league games, including the 4-1 thumping of Newcastle at St James's Park. Things quickly deteriorated though. In their next game, the Reds lost 2-1 to West Ham at Upton Park, and that match brought the first major selection fallout between the co-managers. Evans was keen to stick with the same lineup from the Newcastle fixture, feeling the players would be buoyant after such an impressive win. Julia thought the Hammers were more dangerous side and wanted to drop striker Karl Heinz-Riedler for an extra defender, Steve Harkness. The Frenchman got his way, but his decision was damned by the defeat and the fact that Riedler, a late substitute, scored Liverpool's only goal. Resentment began to boil. Julia and Evans had both signed off on the purchase of Vegard Hegem that summer, but they couldn't agree on which position to play the Norwegian in. Julia's introduction of heart rate monitors and training and modernisation of the player's diet was accepted, but he trod on toes when insisting that white wine, rather than the permitted red, was not allowed at meal time. And he ached Evans further by undermining him over innocuous things such as what time the team's boss would depart from matches, telling players that the coach would leave 15 minutes later than Evans had already instructed. Evans also felt that Julia was leaving an unfair amount of the unpleasant aspects of their shared remit up to him. They had agreed that whenever a player was to be left out, they would break the news together. But when Jason McAtee was dropped for longer run of poor form, Evans couldn't find Julia when the time came to tell the player of their decision. Evans delivered the bad news alone and later said he found Julia in the boardroom, claiming he'd forgotten about their shared obligation. The Frenchman's decision to sack fitness coach Andy Clark and Evans' appointment was also unpopular. It was on a flight home from a UEFA Cup trip to Valencia in November that Evans realised he could go on no longer. Liverpool had won just once in their last seven league games, but they managed to draw two all in Spain, securing a place in the third round via away goals. They'd only just scraped through though, with McManaman and Paul Ince having received contentious red cards. In the dressing room afterwards, Julio was spotted rifling through players discarded shirts, picking out three. When asked what he was doing, he said he was going to give them to the match officials, a French trio. Evans was furious, feeling that the referee had almost cost him the game and should not be rewarded in such a way. Julia is then said to have changed the story, claiming instead that the shirts were Valencia's contingent of French players. Heated words were exchanged, Julia threw down the shirts and stormed out of the dressing room. In the hours after the match, Evans decided to hand in his resignation, although he would first see out the next two games, which would defeat the lowly derby in the Premier League and Tottenham in the League Cup. When Evans informed David Moores of the decision, the chairman was devastated. Moores and director Tom Saunders pleaded with Evans to reconsider, even offering him other positions at the club. The manager's mind was made up though. In a statement released to confirm his departure, Evans said, rather poetically, that he didn't want to stick around and become a ghost on the wall. To give Gerard a real chance, he said, I have to walk away. 
Evans was only 50 years old when he left Liverpool, but he would never manage again on a full-time basis. He was overlooked in the running for the Nottingham Forest and Bolton jobs in the years after his departure, and his only other managerial stint was, coincidentally, as joint caretaker boss of Fulham for a month in 2000, alongside former Red Carl hans Riedler. Liverpool went on to finish the 1998-1999 season 7th, but Julio would achieve considerable success in his five and a half years in sole charge of the club, including the treble of the FA Cup, League Cup and UEFA Cup in 2001. History remembers Liverpool's short-lived joint manager's experiment as a great embarrassment, a bungled attempt to marry the past with the future which undermined one of Anfield's greatest servants. Moores and the other board members expressed genuine respect for Evans and regret at how things ended for him at the club. But it was that respect that meant he was kept on as joint manager when Hooley was brought in rather than simply replaced. In the end, that did nobody any favours.